everybody and welcome to another video. In this video I will show you how you can animate the helicopter scene that you saw on the beginning of this video. First we will focus on modeling. Later on we will add materials and lights. And in the end I will show you how you can animate the whole sequence and render it out. So let's begin. So the first thing that we are going to model out is going to be helicopter cockpit. And first I will add subdivision surface modifier on our default cube. I will change shading from flat to smooth by pressing right click in object mode and I will move in right orthographic view and in edit mode as well. Next I want to turn on x-ray mode because I want to select back vertices as well. So I will start extruding this back part by pressing E and Y to extrude it on the Y axis and now with G and Z I will pull it to about here. Let's return it a little bit. And now we can move in top orthographic view and here I will press S and X to scale it on the X axis and also I will scale this down the frontal part as well. And now we need to create hole for our cockpit so here I will switch to face selection so I can select this face and one on the other side and here I will press I to insert two faces together like this on both sides and now we need to connect those two together and we can do it by using bridge edge loops which we can find under edit search and search for bridge edge loops and now if you select it you can see that we created hole inside now i will increase number of subdivisions and also in top orthographic view by pressing ctrl and r i will add edge loop in the middle and i will scroll once to add two on top and now we are done with modeling our cockpit next i want to create a tail and for that part i will create another cube to our scene let's scale it down by pressing s and the g i will pull it back to about there and now we can go in edit mode and here I will pull this back by pressing G and Y. Make sure that you're working in X-ray mode so you can select back vertices. And now we can press A to select everything and S and X to scale it a little bit on the X-axis. Now I will need to go back in object mode because I want to apply scale. And the reason for that is because I want to bevel those edges and if you press N you can see that we have ununiform scaled. So by pressing Ctrl and A I will be able to apply scale. Now we have uniform scale and now we can go back in edit mode and by pressing ctrl and B we will be able to bevel those edges and by scrolling up your mouse wheel you will be able to add more segments to your bevel. So I will bevel it to about there. I will press right click in object mode to change shading to smooth and we are done with tail. And now we can move on the ending part of the tail and for that part I will use the same principle that I use for cockpit. So with the shift and A I can go and create another cube to RC and also subdivision surface modifier. I will change shading to smooth and move it back to about there. Let's kill it a little bit more and now we can switch in edit mode and switch to face selection. So here I will select this face and one on the other side. And by pressing I, I will insert two faces there on both sides. And once again, I will use bridge edge loops, which you can find under edit and search and select it. Now we can go and increase number of subdivision to three. And also in top orthographic view, we can go and add two edge loops by pressing control and R and scrolling up our mouse wheel. Now we can select everything and press S and X to scale it on the X axis. And also we can go and scale it a little bit more. And now we are done with modeling our back part. So now we can move on our small character inside of our cockpit. And for that I'm going to create another cube to our scene with subdivision surface modifier. Also change shading from flat to smooth. I'll press S to scale. So this is going to be head for our character. And now I want to create body with the same cube. So I will duplicate it. Enter in edit mode and with control and there we can add edge loop in the middle. Now we can go and scale it up and with G and Z we can pull it inside. And with S and Y I'm going to scale it a little bit on the Y axis. So right now we are done with adding our small character inside. And next we can go and continue with creating our rotor blade on top. So for that part I'm going to duplicate this sphere with the shift in D and place it on top. And I will scale down a little bit. So this is going to be middle of our rotor blade. And now we can bring circle to our scene. Scale it up a little bit and place it in the middle of this sphere. Now we can move in top orthographic view. And here I will switch in edit mode in vertex selection. And I want to get rid of the, those middle vertices. So I will select them and get rid of them by pressing X. Now we can press A to select everything. And with E I will extrude it up to about there. 
and now we can go and add subdivision surface modifier and also solidifier as well to add some thickness to it so here under thickness I'm going to increase it up a little bit and I will quickly move to object mode to change shading from flat to smooth as well and now we can go back in edit mode and here I will press ctrl and R to add edge loop in the middle on the both sides and also I want to add edge loops on the ending parts by pressing ctrl and R and also here on, the, on this back and on the other side as well and as you can see we are done with modeling rotor blades and now we can go and duplicate it by pressing shift and D on the Y so we are going to place it in the middle of this ending part so I will rotate it 490 degrees on the Y axis and now I will scale it down and place it in the middle to about there and here I'm going to play a little bit with the thickness to increase it up and also with the scale of this sphere also I want to scale it up a little bit on the X axis and now we can go and continue with the last part which are landing skids so for that part I'm going to bring another cube to our scene and also this time I will use mirror modifier because we will need on the both sides and here we can go in edit mode so here I will scale this down on the X axis and also on the Z axis and with G and Z I will pull it down there I'm going to scale it up also a little bit on the X axis and here I'm going to add edge loop in the middle and I will scroll once to add two edge loops in the middle and now we can go and scale this on the Y axis so I will press S and Y and now we can go and add subdivision surface modifier I'm going to change shading to smooth and here I'm going to select this ending part and this one in front and by pressing G and Z we can go and pull this up but be sure that you're working with the X-ray mode so we can go and select both of these and now we can go and pull this up and curve it a little bit and also we can go and add edge loop in the middle so now we can go actually and scale it a little bit on the Y so I'm going to press S and Y to scale it on the Y axis and we are done with modeling our helicopter now that we are done with modeling our helicopter we can focus on materials, lights and also setting up the scene so first I will select the helicopter and place it on top of the grid and now with the shift in A I'm going to create simple plane for the background I will press S to scale it up and now I will press 0 to enter in camera view or you can toggle it here next under camera settings I would like to lower down number of focal length to 35mm and also under viewport display I would like to turn on face part out so right now we can focus only what the camera is going to see and under compositing guys we can turn center to see the center of the camera now with the shift and create key we will be able to enter in fly camera mode so now we can use our keyboard to navigate around with our camera so let's place our camera on top to about here and now we can go and also scale our background because you can see that we have empty space behind so we can press S and scale it up to fill the gap there and also let's go and adjust our camera a little bit more and zoom it out a little bit and now we can focus on adding lights so for the lights we are going to use HD rise and the best way to find free HD rise is to go on polyheaven.com and here you will be able to browse HD rise so you can see that they have huge collection of environments which you can use for your scenes and also you will be able to see the material preview and how environment is going to affect your materials here and for my scene I decided to go with this Rutoy park and if you select any of these environments here you will be able to download it and for example you can also change the resolution of it and now that we have HD rise we can go back in blender and import it to light up our scene also if you want to learn how to use blender and become professional 3d artist check out our online academy rendercraft.com currently there is more than 80 courses available and we are creating courses every single month so make sure that you check it out now back to the video now that we got our HDRI we can go and import it to our scene so first I'm going to switch workspace from layout to shading and here currently set to object shading so we need to switch to world shading and now I'm going to hover above this background node and press ctrl and T to bring environment texture mapping and texture coordinate at the same time and if you cannot do the same shortcut that I did here you will need to enable node wrangler add-on which you can find under edit preference and search for node wrangler and enable it here now we can go and import our hdri here under open and navigate to your hdri 
Now we can switch in render view and here you can see that we loaded our HDRI and also if you want to rotate your HDRI you can use this Z value on rotation under mapping node. So I'm going to keep on zero and now I will switch to layout workspace. Also I would like to change my render engine from EV to cycle. I'm going to use GPU compute and also don't forget to turn on denoising as well while you're rendering. Now we can go and switch to render view and also I want to add one more light to our scene and that one is area light that will be above our helicopter so with the shift and A I'm going to add simple area light and with G and Z I'm going to place it on top and also I will increase power to be 5000 it's going to be just fine and now I'm going to scale up my area light just a little bit so I'll press S to scale and also for the color I will switch to bluish color like this. So now we can jump on adding materials to our scene. So first I'm going to add simple black material to our background plane and now for the helicopter I will select rotor blades and here I will create new material and I will also make it reddish color like this and also I will increase metallicness to 1 and now I will share this material to other parts of the helicopter. So also for this back rotor blades I will apply the same material and also for landing skids as well and for the head of our character here so I will just share this same material on those parts as well so for cockpit and this ending part I'm going to use white metallic material to it so we will need to increase metallicness to one and now I will share that material for this ending part as well and for the body of the character I will create simple yellow material to it and for this tail part I want to add glass material to it so I will switch to shading and currently set to world so we need to switch to object shading and here I'm going to create new material and I'm going to remove this principal BSDF and with the shift and A I'm going to search for glass BSDF and now I will connect it to the surface in material output so now we can switch in rendered view and you can see that we have this uh, transparent glass material but I want to increase roughness to 0.4 and now I can go and apply subdivision surface modifier on our cockpit because I want to add also this glass material in front as well so here I will switch real quickly to layout and I will enter in edit mode let's switch to look dev mode and here I will switch to face selection so I can select some edge loops so I will select this edge loop here or actually let's go with this one here and this one here and I will create new material and this material I want to make it the reddish color that I got for the other parts of the helicopter. Now I will assign it there and now I will select all these in between uh, edge loops by holding Alt and Shift and selecting those edge loops in the middle. And once again I will create new material and I will apply that same material that I got on this back tail part and I will just press assign. And now we can switch to camera view by pressing 0 and in render view as well. And now we can go and focus on animating our helicopter. So now that we have all materials and lights to our scene, we are ready to animate our helicopter. So first I'm going to switch to solid view and we are going to prepare helicopter to be animated. So first I'm going to select all the parts of the helicopter and I want them to parent for the cockpit so the last thing that I want to select is going to be cockpit and you can see that we have lighter orange which means that this object is active object so I want to parent all the other parts to cockpit so I will press ctrl and p and set parent to object so now if you press g or r you can see that all other parts are following cockpit and now we can go and switch our workspace from layout to animation and here in this workspace we are going to animate our helicopter. And the first thing that we are going to animate is going to be rotor blades on top and back. So first we are going to animate this on top and now if you press RZ you can see that it's rotating along Z axis and that's what we need to animate. So I will press N to bring transform menu and here we have this Z value so we will need to insert keyframes on the Z rotation of this rotor blade. So I will press right click and here I'm going to insert single keyframe. Now I will move on the last keyframe which is going to be 250th. So here I'm going to move on the last frame and here I will insert another value which is going to be 5000 
And now I will press right click and here I will insert keyframe. So now if you play this animation you can see that our rotor blades are rotating slowly at the beginning which we will need and after that it's coming faster and faster but at the end it's slowed down so we will need to fix the ending part. So first I'm going to switch here to graph editor and here we cannot see the ending part of this curve so we will need to press home page to see our curve our keyframes on this curve editor and here you can see that in the beginning it will slow down so you can see that we are having basic bezier interpolation but we will need to fix the ending part so here i'm going to go on the last keyframe and select it and i'm going to rotate this handle by pressing r and make it straight like this and now if you play this animation you can see that it will be slow at the beginning and after that it will be the same speed all the way till the last keyframe as you can see. So we are going to use the same principle for the back rotor blades as well but here we will need to apply rotation. So first we will need to apply solidifier modifier by pressing ctrl and a and now by pressing ctrl and a once again here in this workspace we are going to apply rotation and now we can go and animate this x so first i will move on the on the first frame here i'm going to insert the keyframe on the x rotation so i will press right click and insert single keyframe and now on the end i'm going to insert another keyframe once again 5000 and right click to insert another single keyframe and once again we will need to fix the interpolation on the curve editor so you can see it will start slowly which we will need but at the end it slowed down and now we are going to fix just curve handle on this ending keyframe so i'm going to press r and make it straight like this and now we are done with animation of our rotor blades on both top and back as well so now we will need to animate the movement of the helicopter so so first I'm going to move on the first frame and here I want my helicopter to stay for a while on the ground until it gets enough power to be lifted up with rotor blades. So here I'm going to use Auto King for inserting keyframes that is a way for us to animate our helicopter and we need to insert first keyframe so I will press G and left click to insert keyframes. Because of the Auto King you can see that we immediately got keyframes on location, rotation and scale as well. And I want to stay it on the ground for a while so I'm going to duplicate this keyframe by pressing shift and D and moving, move it on the 80th frame. So now if you play this animation you can see that the rotor blades are starting to work but there is not enough power for lifting our helicopter and under 130th frame we can go and start lifting our helicopter so I will press G and Z to pull it up and also we can go and move it actually a little bit back and also rotate it a little bit back as well and now on the 160th frame we can go and make it a little bit straight and also move it a little bit in front so now if you play this animation you can see that it's lifting as it should be and now it's straightening up but here on the 160th frame we can go and rotate it slightly on, on the Z rotation and now we can go and move it on the 119th frame so on this frame we need to rotate our camera toward camera because we want our helicopter to fly to the camera so we are going to rotate it a little bit to the camera i will press zero to enter in camera view and here i will press twice air to rotate it a little bit more toward camera like this and now we can go and move it on the last frame so here we need to move our helicopter to the camera so we can go and move it move it in top orthographic view and also in front i will press g and z to pull it up and here i'm going to rotate it a little bit straight to camera so now if you play this animation you can see that we are done with animating our helicopter So that's it about this video, I hope you had fun and that you were able to see how easy it can be to animate and use Blender to create awesome projects like this one. Until next video, bye!